What now? I'm too tired to get up right now and let you out, guys. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I think it's time I gave consideration to adding a pet door. Ladies and gentlemen, Garfield and friends. Friends, are there? To help you get started, to give you a push on your way. Friends, are there? To turn you around, get your feet on the ground for a brand new day. They'll pick you up when you're down. Help you swallow your pride when something inside's got to break on through to the other side. Friends are someone you can open up to When you feel like you're ready to flip When you've got the world on your shoulders Friends are there to give you a tip Friends are there when you need them They're even there when you go For a walk in the park, for a shot in the dark Friends are there I don't care But friends will care Smart kids watch this show. Other kids change the channel. I'm waiting for the pizza I ordered to be delivered. Garfield doesn't know anything about it, and I want to keep it that way. That's it. Gotta go. Bye. Gee, I wonder who's at the door. It couldn't be a pizza because nobody ordered a pizza. It must be a special delivery letter. Certainly not a pizza. Here's your money. Give me the pizza. Goodbye. By the way, thanks. You forgot the anchovies. Don't worry, you'll remember next time. How could anyone eat a jumbo mushroom, pineapple, sausage, pepper, olive, onion, meatball, Canadian bacon, and pimento pizza all by himself? Plus, I usually prefer a thick crust. You know, one of these days, eating like that is going to give you a nightmare. Wait and see. A nightmare? Me? Get real. Imagine him thinking I'd have a nightmare from eating too much. Me. What a silly thing. What a silly... <sighs> Garfield, eat. Eat with all your might. Eat that pasta. Eat it pasta till it's out of sight. Till it's out of sight. Munch, Garfield, munch. Come on, let's do lunch. Make your belly mozzarella crunch, crunch, crunch. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Cheese, salami, ham, and Swiss, whole wheat, rye, and white. Sliced tomatoes, tons of mayo, love at first bite. Garfield, you're an awesome eater. Yes, you are the top. Butter, batter, spitter, batter, you don't have to stop. Double stack it, you can hack it. Yum, Garfield, yum. Don't you miss a crumb. At a dinner, you're the winner. Don't you pause or you'll get thinner. More, Garfield, more, till you can't fit through the door. Eat, Garfield, eat. Chow, chow, chow. You've got to stop eating, Garfield. You're getting bigger and bigger and bigger and oh, no. I knew this would happen. He's just getting larger and larger. I know you're still hungry, Garfield. Don't worry, I'll find food for you. Uh, how about a pizza? How about a hundred pizzas? And don't forget the anchovies this time. have a report of a giant orange cat that seems to be devouring things left and right. For an on-the-spot report, we cut now to our mobile unit. What's that? 
We have a report he just ate the mobile unit. I'm leaving town, folks. <laughs> I wish I had a mustard factory around here to eat. Now I'm thirsty. <sighs> but I'm still hungry. More food. More food. Don't worry, Garfield. We'll get you more food. Honest! What? What do you mean you're all out of food? Just what I said, I'm all out of food. This giant orange cat came by and ate it all. They don't even have paper towels left. There's no food in the entire town. More food. More food. I, I, I don't believe it. More food. More food. Hello? Get me the National Guard. National Guard, we have an emergency. We need lasagna. That's right, I said lasagna. Fifty tons, no, a hundred tons. And hurry. Operation Lasagna is proceeding according to order. In the meantime, we're filling up the Grand Canyon with chicken gumbo just in case he wants soup. This is your cat. How much more food will it take to satisfy him? I don't know if he can be satisfied, General. He's eaten all the lasagna, and he still looks hungry. More food! More food! There isn't enough food in the world to feed this cat! General, you can't. I must! Attention, men! We have no choice! Bring in the air squadron! For a minute there, I was afraid this nightmare might get silly. Garfield! Garfield, you have to stop! You have to stop eating! Garfield, you have to stop eating! Mr. Spock, anyone? Greetings, Earth creature. You no doubt have questions. Yeah. You got anything to eat? Hmm. Nice and plump. We did a good job fattening you up with the interplanetary hunger ray. Fattening me up? But of course, you will be Thanksgiving dinner for the entire planet of Clarion. And there'll be plenty left over for sandwiches the next day. Me? Sandwiches? No. No. I'd make lousy sandwiches. I want to see John again. And Odie, he can have all his dog biscuits. I'll go on a diet. I'll lose weight. You don't want me for Thanksgiving dinner. My drumsticks have fur on them. No! They're basting me. They're... I know that, Slurp. Odie. You were having a nightmare, Garfield. That's what it was, a nightmare. Look, I'm sorry I yelled at you about the pizza. I fixed you something to make it up to you. Lasagna? Uh-huh. Take it away. Take it away. Ah. That's it. I'm going on a strict diet for 20 pounds. Or 20 minutes. Whichever comes first. Hi, Wade. What kind of seeds are you planting? Oh, I don't know. They're mystery seeds. Oh. I'll look it up in the book of mystery seeds I just happen to have here. Let's see. Seeds. Seeds. Oh, here it is. 
near the seeds of the dangerous South American duck choker vine. Did you hear that, Wade? Wade? Oh, Wade? Wade? Oh, Wade? Wade? And so the pirate captain stalked ever closer. Ah, you'll be walking the plank for that, matey, he said. Uh, the evil buccaneers gathered on the deck and drew their swords. This gives me a low-down, sneaky, rotten idea. I should be ashamed of myself for even thinking of it. Well, of course I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Let's see. Cowboy suit, Loch Ness monster, Murph Griffin costume, Queen of Sheba, cheeseburger, chicken suit. What would I ever need that for? Let's see. Then the pirates moved closer. Are there any pirates nearby, Orson? Of course not. Shiver me timbers and scrape me barnacles and mizzen the mast. Whatever that is. I be a pirate. And I be getting out of here. And I be right beside you. Help! Pirate type person! Call the Air Force! Call the Marines! Call Peter Pan! Help! They'll make me walk the plank! And we aren't even near an ocean. Help! <laughs> Wait, I just realized that was no pirate. That was Roy. Boy, I wish you'd figure that out 30 seconds sooner. No, Roy, Indian that Indian was Indian not Indian very Indian nice. Indian no. <laughs> What's the matter? Can't you take a joke? That wasn't funny. Banana nose. <laughs> <laughs> Banana nose? Good name for that dude, sis. Hey. No fair picking on a guy's nose. What's the matter, Roy? Can't you take a joke? Sure, if it's funny. I just don't see anything funny about my nose. Yeah, well, you ought to see it from this side. <laughs> <laughs> All right, call me Banana Nose. See if it bothers me. <laughs> Banana Nose. 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 Mm. Hey, banana nose. You think we ought to kid, Roy? Sure. Oh. Ah. Hey, want to have a peanut butter and pickle sandwich? No, thanks. I just put a TV dinner in the microwave. Oh, good. It's done. Come on. Let's go search for worms out in the field. You go that way. I'll go this way. Roger. All right, worms. It's time. <laughs> Aha! You won't get away from me. Where'd he go? Come back here, you worm. You, you. <laughs> Booker, where'd you go? I thought I saw some worms. Booker? Booker? Roy, I've been thinking. Folks shouldn't call you banana... Roy? Dear everyone, I thought I had friends here. I guess I was wrong. Don't worry, you'll never see my banana nose here again. Goodbye, signed Roy, parentheses, banana nose. Oh, no! Can I have his room? This is serious. Roy's run away. Hey, man, he's always picking on us, playing tricks and junk like that. Bo's right. But don't you realize what you're acting like? No, what are we acting like that's so awful? You're acting like Roy. Ooh, Pig's got a point. I am shamed. We gotta go find Roy and bring him back. Orson, everybody! Booker's missing. We went out into the field to look for worms hours ago. I can't find him anywhere. <laughs> now everybody's missing. Come on, we've got to search the countryside. Poor Booker, poor Roy, poor Booker and Roy. Well, Nose, looks like it's just you and me. I don't think you look like a banana. 
A ripe zucchini, maybe, but not a banana. I'll go someplace where people don't care about your nose. Boy, wish I'd brought something to eat. I'm hungry. I'm imagining I smell a peanut butter sandwich with pickles. It is peanut butter and pickles. Help! Someone help! Booker, is that you? Is that you, Banana? I mean, Roy? Grab onto this vine, Booker. I last saw Booker around here. Hey, give a look, man. The dude's gone and done it. Roy! And Booker! Hey, 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 How'd you find him, Roy? My nose led me to him. I smelled peanut butter and pickles. That's what I had for lunch. I guess a banana nose is good for something after all. Yeah. <laughs> Does your nose look like a banana? Are your toes shaped like Indiana? Do your ears seem bigger than Montana? <laughs> Dry your tears, we understand ya. Hey, everyone has something strange about them. That's what makes us all special. Wouldn't it be great if you could just look in the mirror and say, Yo, banana nose, now you know how my sailboat goes. Here's Montana ears, I have ears so my sister can steer. Hey, hey, Indiana toes, getting me across those winter snows, whatever the name. I'm still the same nice person. Some dough for body. Now we need some carrots for color. Perhaps some spaghetti for texture. And of course, fries on the side. Garfield? And two eggs, over easy. How long have you been sticking food to the ceiling? Oh, for quite some time now. <clears throat> a poem by Garfield the Cat. I decided late one Sunday I would sleep till half past Monday. Suddenly I felt a tap which awoke me from my nap. I awoke and found before me someone who was sure to bore me. Please leave me to sleep, I chirped. That was when the creature slurped. Just then the surprise was sprung. Seven yards of doggy tongue. Doggy tongues will always trick you. Look so harmless till they lick you. He let out a loving howl. I went out to get a towel. When a dog's enthusiastic, what you want to do is drastic. All my fur was wringing wet. Should have had it washed and set. Let me sleep, I'd often told him. Looked like I would have to scold him. I was in for a surprise when I looked into his eyes. Pleading as they were for mercy, left me with a controversy. Then I got a wondrous notion how to sleep without commotion. So he'd leave this cat alone. I dug out his favorite bone. Figured if I couldn't cure him, next best thing would be to lure him. When he came back, he would find I had locked the door behind. Now at least his dripping yap wouldn't interrupt my nap. 
In my world, there's no excusing when you interrupt my snoozing. So while I was busy snoring, my friend Odie went exploring. Usually he doesn't roam quite this far away from home, but he wandered to an alley where the tough dogs often dally. You would be a little nuts to go near these mangy mutts. Odie never comprehends. He decided to make friends. When they saw this shy intruder, they could scarcely have been ruder. <laughs> Odie's thoughts are always sunny. What he wondered was so funny. This one said is not a dog. Maybe this is someone's frog. It's no frog, the other said. It's a rat that ain't been fed. <laughs> No, oh, the biggest one exclaimed, I know what this runt is named. Not a frog and not a rat. This is just a teensy gnat. And he grabbed poor Odie's bone and he claimed it for his own. Odie, you must understand, always wants to lend a hand. Anytime or anywhere, Odie would be glad to share. But you have to do it right. Taking things is not polite. Odie wanted it returned. His request was promptly spurned. <laughs> Odie wound up wet and soggin' with a frog upon his noggin. He made sure the frog was thrown back. Now he'd go to get his bone back. But before our friend returned, one of them seemed most concerned. She said she was not amused at the way he'd been abused. But she said, you're very tough. Did you have to be so rough? Just then, Odie reappeared. The bulldog gave a laugh and sneered. Picked up Odie, very crass. Threw him for a forward pass. Now the other dog agreed that was not a funny deed. And she told the bulldog he really should let Odie be. Butch said that he wasn't done. Pounding Odie's too much fun. That was when he looked and found that his ladies weren't around. They decided they would flee with someone much more nice to be with. They led Odie to a world where he'd not be kicked or hurled. Butch was left there all alone with no friends, just Odie's bone. So they marched the little waif to the home where he'd be safe. Odie had made lifelong pals with a couple doggy gals. Someone had not figured fully. People never love a bully. So our tale is adjourned with this lesson to be learned. Helpless folks you shouldn't flog. People love an underdog. The end. And that's a wrap.